Hello, hockey and basketball fans. My name is David. Thought I would, uh... uh <clears throat> thought I would, uh, start this message, start this, uh, video at, uh, 5.08 on the afternoon of, uh, of Tuesday, 7th of February, 2023, North American Eastern Time. Thought I would focus on the, you know, the uh, Raptors and Canadian teams. I found you uh, want to get uh, this, uh, this Wi-Fi to get, you know, this, this laptop connected to internet. It's not what I to do. I'm just going to try to get connected there. Alright, so I'm going to do that. Try to get it connected. Once I do that, I would mention that uh, the Raptors basically have until, you know, Friday afternoon Eastern Time to make trades to acquire players eligible to play during the NBA playoffs. Yet, it's hard to know where the Raptors are going to go. Indeed, when it comes to the standing, it's just going to try to get the technical difficulties here. Just not sure what's, what's going on. Sorry with this. I'm going to try another way. I'm going to try another device as soon as I can. Very sorry about this. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, I'm just going to... So while I... Alright. Oh. It's a little bit slow, so I do apologize for that. I'll try to get something a little bit... Um, as you can see... It's going to... Uh, it's going to... You can see here... In the Eastern Conference, oops, sorry that. I mean, the Raptors are still within striking distance of a play-in spot, but have only won half of their of their last ten games, and in in stiff competition means I'm not sure whatever tiebreaker the NBA uses, but. The Raptors are in second on tiebreakers among those teams. Well, well, the Wizards have a lower, lowest winning percentage. The Raps and Pacers are tied on. You know, not sure what you know what form or what the NBA uses. But again, the problem is, it's not clear what Raps President Ujiri or GM Webster plans to do. After all, these Raps have yet to. You know, you know, you know. I don't think there's a you know, there's a better time to start improving the team than this month, given the competitive, given how the Raps have, you know, even even with a play-in spot, will have to win at least one game beyond the regular season just to get into the postseason. May as well be sellers at the trade deadline. I mean, I mean, the Raps are after all are four and a half games out of a top six conference spot. That's right. Four and a half games. Four and a half games the Raps may be able to make up, but would have to go on an amazing run just to do that. I mean, the Heat are four games above 500. The Raps, five games below. So, they got work to do, but it's not clear how they're going to get there. They have only one game left before the trade deadline. Now to get into uh, the results from the games that took place in the NHL um, on Monday Eastern Time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get here.
is a little bit slow. So those are the games that took place then. Alright, I'm gonna go to Tuesday. If I can get them to go. Oops. Alright. Let's give ahead a little bit here. The Oars and Wings will be facing off against each other. Little C at, at Little Caesar Arena. And Wednesday featured the Canucks taking on the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. I also thought I would mention the NHL standings. So I'm going to try to get them there. Oh, I'm just trying to get them. All right, give me a moment here. I'm just going to try to... Ah, oops. All right, I'm going to do is... Internet is very slow, so I do apologize. I'm going to try to get them... Uh, we'll try to get the standings. Nah, oops. Uh. All right, I'm having some technical difficulties here. So what I'll do is I'm going to just going to try to get the standings this way, another way. All right. All right, let's see, change. Just give you a moment here. All right, I'm going to do, I'm going to just... All right, so. What I was going to do. Just going to get the standings with respect to Canadian teams. The Leafs are. Um, are so 14 points ahead of the Sabres for a top three divisional spot. Sens are six points behind. For wild card spot, the Habs are seven points for the back. The Habs probably ain't going to make the postseason, aren't going to see playoff action in April. Oh, come on. You know all the Winnipeg Jets? Are uh, eight points, remain eight points ahead of the Habs for a top three central division spot. The others in action against the Wings. Remain two points out of a divisional spot and have the chance to take over third based on more regulation wins as long as the Oilers win. Flames, with an overtime loss to the Rangers, um, have a point, but again, they are vulnerable to dropping out. The Preds are still in the mix. The Canucks are way back. So therefore, it's um, basically it's been, you know, it's, you know, both Flames and Canucks played rather competitive games. That's something the Leafs did not do against the Bruins last week on Wednesday. The Leafs, now we're going to see where the Leafs are with respect to what, you know, Terms of their coming upcoming schedule. So what do I do here? Just gonna so So what I'm going to do is to try to pull up the Leafs schedule. I know they have a home and home against the Blue Jackets. I'm just going to... I'm just going to pull up the schedule. What the Leafs can learn from the win, from the points earned by the Canucks and Flames. Now I'm going to do is just going to go down, just recap how they've done. And against the Atlantic Division, they're not doing too well away from home, having just one win in six games, and overall just four points in those games. 
against no other division have Leafs earned a lower proportion of points than against Pacific Division teams on the road. That was during an October swing throughout uh, throughout the, the western part of the contiguous U.S. So, it's going to go down to there. October wasn't the great. November, Leafs lit up. December, January didn't do that badly. And here we are, though. I mean, you know, those two games were when Matthews was out of the lineup. And then we have this one. Those two Matthews were out of, was out of the lineup. Matthews wasn't in the lineup for that one either. So here we go. For after the All-Star break, but before the end of February, the Leafs have a back-to-back. -back. I want to see them get four out of a possible four points. Given the Leafs have not put together... You know, you know, Leafs did put together a five-game point streak in uh, in January, but that's been, but no point streak has been longer than three since earlier in December. So Leafs got to you know need to get back, and if they can get at least two thirds of the available points, they should manage. They should manage to win. They um, should manage to win. They're well, they should manage to get a top, finish top three in the Atlantic. The teams that are mostly, you know, Minnesota Wild and Seattle Kraken are in playoff positions. The other teams, Leafs face the rest of the February won't be aren't. But then we go you no know, go into March. We have uh, what is it here? Fourteen games play. Oh, for 29 days, an average of just under half a game per day. Oilers, Flames, and Canucks. So, they don't, at least don't have to travel too far within Alberta to play their back-to-back -back set. And then they have a four-game homestand in the middle of March. Four straight games. And then it's on the road. You know, hosting the Canes on the 17th of March, Eastern Time. But playing the Sens the following night at the Canadian Tire Center. Then we have a back-to-back -back in different, you know, neighboring American states against the Canes on the 25th, and the 26th against the Predator against the Preds. So that is. Um, so we have three sets of back-to-backs, and then we go. Then it's two full counter days off. For another back to back at the Canadian Tire Center against the Sens, but before hosting the Wings the following evening. And then the final set Passage and Lightning, and then the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. So, what do the Leafs need to do to learn from what happened against the Bruins before the All Star break? It's time for the, you know, bomb, more members of the bomb six forward group to score. Let's face facts. Yarncrook was the only player to score a goal among members of the bomb six forward group. Where was Zach Aston Reese, Pierre Engvall, Pontus Holmberg? So I have okay, so Engvall, Holmberg, Kerfoot. Kampf. Who else is there? I forget. I'd have to go back to the game to refer to that there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, just going to briefly go back to the 1st of February here. Gee. Alright, I'm gonna do this try to do this here. Alright, let's 
try to get this done. Just trying to get this here, sort of for technical difficulties. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... So let's see... Who scored? We have Marner and Yardcrook among forwards. It's nice when blue liners get points, but when members of the bottom six forward group don't score, it's a, it could be a problem. With Matthew down the lineup, it was a problem. So let's look at the Thieves. Okay, yeah, Joey Anderson. All right, so... So yes, Michael Bunting had an off night. But what happens when not enough members of the Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, Bunting, Quintet score? Well, we get a result like what happened with the against the Bruins. When if Matthews is absent. So yes, a 2 3 0 0 win, regulation loss, overtime loss, shootout loss record since last preseason. Outscored so far 17 to 12. One game during which the Leafs have scored a minimum of three goals. Ideally, a team in the, in the, you know, to win a game in the NHL should score a minimum of three goals to win. Leafs have not, have only hit that target once. In one of those five games during which Matthews, after last preseason, has so far been absent. What's that done? So I look at the score sheet. For that game against Bruins. Joey Anderson. No goal. No points. Well, zero plus minus. Zach Aston Reese. Minus one. No points. Pierre Engvall. Minus one. No points. Put up. Pontus Holmberg. Minus two. No point put up. David Kampf. No point. Minus one. Kerfoot. No point, but still plus one. So that's right. Pretty much any any forward outside the, you know, the Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, Bunting Quintet, Wayne Simmons. I mean, you know, Wayne Simmons. No points, minus one. I admit that again. Jacob Truba, a defenseman for the Rangers, has put up uh, proportionately more points than than Simmons, although both are fighters. They are known for you know, starting fights. Give me a second. Chew! 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 I just do is go to if I could find that segment from the daytime real Kipper and Bourne show. Just gonna um about that um what was there. Alright, so let's go Okay, so that is uh, on the daytime Real Kipper and Bourne show. Intense clash, clash between the Flames and Rangers over at Madison Square Garden. Let's go back to that game. Certainly was very competitive. It was close. It was. Uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the scoreboard here. So I'm going to go to Rangers and Flames. So, all right, home. Let me look at the, um, They look at Truba. A defenseman who, despite not having scored, did 
put up six hits and blocked one shot. He was, however, minus two, so that's not great. But, you know, I think that, you know, Truba is useful in different ways. Problem with Simmons is his inability to keep up in the modern NHL. Yes, I admit that there are times when slow and steady, that, you, that being slow and steady ends up winning races. When it comes to pop battles, being too slow means being scored upon, having to ice the puck just to get it out of the team's own zone. Being scored upon, I see the puck to avoid being scored upon, or taking some sort of a penalty because reach in or whatever, there's a trip, and you know, and that or interference, whatever, and that means well, the opposing team goes to the power play and the puck is already in the defending team zone. They're already in the zone of the team that is doing is killing the penalty, so it's not good. Thought I would end. Uh, thought I would try to end this video with uh, controversy over officiating. I mean, are there calls that that are missed? Yes. Or not gotten right? Yes. Do I see? You know, are there calls that are hard to understand? Yes. There was some sort of kicking motion on that uh, game on that goal that ended up for the Flames tying up that game with the Rangers three at three apiece. The, que the question is, though, if a team ends up losing, do the refs, does officiating deserve blame? Well, it's difficult to say that it does. Yeah, there was that controversial, you know, no call, high stick by Wayne Gretzky in the Leafs Kings 1993 conference final. Do I blame officiating? I don't remember very much of that series. Other than the Leafs end up having a, you know, having this lead, but ending up losing the series by this margin. And that is very important to know. And it's, you know, not just, you know, oh, we should blame Kerry Fraser or whatever, but rather, have what have the Leafs done since then? The closest they've come, the closest the Leafs have come since their seven-game loss of a conference final back in 1993 has been a six-game loss of a conference final against the Canes in, in you know, when the Leafs, after the Leafs had been had moved to the Eastern Conference, and that was in 2002. The last time the Leafs, in a playoff series, beat a team other than the Sens. And since then, the Leafs have only won one playoff series, and that was against the Sens in 2004. It's been a long time since then. And what, you know, what Kyle Dubas plans to do at the trade deadline, or before then, it's hard to tell. There are rumors about Jacob Chikrin potentially being transferred from the Coyotes to the Leafs. What's that going to involve? We shall see. But whether the Leafs get Chikrin or go for someone else, there's definitely three areas that I see, or at least two areas, that I see as needing major improvements. The bottom six forward group. Too many members of which are just not producing. The blue line. Too many goals given up. And we all know what happens when the Leafs give up a minimum of three goals. More often than not, they end up losing. So, again, blue line is secondary concern. Primary concern is the forward group. Then there's what to do about Matt Murray. Should the Leafs acquire a goaltender? I don't know. It's not clear. 
they they appear to be stocked with you know with goalies, Eric Schalgren and Joseph Wall. The latter having been called up um, two weekends ago to well called up uh, what's it last week to uh, oh, to back up Sansonov against the Caps. It's been a mixed bag. Wall has yet to be used in a given game. He's just been a bench warmer, but a very useful one. I mean, the Leafs cannot overtax Samsonov. Because if they do, he may decide at the end of this season, if he, you know, if he is given a qualifying offer, that he's going to turn it down and decide to move to another team. And if, that, if that's the case, the Leafs don't really have any... You know, goalies who have, during a given season, played even 10 or... played in 10 or more games. Shalgren, I see, as a little bit of an edge in the postseason. Should Matt Murray be out? But again, <clears throat> it's very hard to know what's going to happen and what Dubas is going to do. But again, at the end of the day, it's going to be important because... For Dubas to, to fix the bomb six, because he may like to claim that oh that they are they are his guys. But let's look what happened in October. The Leafs got through having earned having averaged just a point per, a point per game. The Canucks <clears throat> among Canadian teams, the Canucks and Flames I would say this season are are tied for longest losing streak, at this many games. The Canucks during theirs start of the season earned this many points. The Flames kind of copied that on their uh, during their own losing streak, which started in October like the Canucks, but ended in mid-November. The Flames earned this many points during a losing streak of this length. So between those losing streaks, the Flames have earned a grand, you know, have you know earned a grand total of this many points out of a possible twenty-four. And is it any surprise the Flames are struggling just to stay in a playoff spot? It shouldn't be five points out of twenty-four. So outside of those losing streaks. So five points out of you no know, five points in twelve games. So fifty-three over the remaining thirty-nine. Quite impressive. And that's a problem. The Flames have a record. Have earned twelve points over the last ten games. Not too bad, but when considering but when considering how badly how badly the Flames need points. Last night's loss in overtime to the Rangers was a letdown. Sure, the Flames, I don't think, ever trailed the Rangers by more than one goal at a time, but did blow a lead of one goal. It's rather important for a team to have at least a two-goal lead to have a cushion. The Flames never did, and they blew that third-period lead and ended up losing in overtime. Again, I unreservedly congratulate the Rangers and Devils for their their respective wins over the Flames and Canucks. But there's no doubt whatsoever that what the Leafs do Leafs need to do is keep games close. And they need to find ways to to score the game opening goal more often. And not find ways to trail in games for minutes on end. Because what happened against the Bruins. Trailed for minutes on end. Game got out of hand. No good. Let's see what happens. Because it may be that all oh, the Leafs are facing a whole bunch of bomb feeders. But how many how many games are the Leafs going to win? It's hard to really predict anymore. And I know there are all these gambling sites. You know, DraftKings. Bet99. Bet Rivers. Um, 
Uh, I kind of lost count. <laughs> there are so many gambling ads that are just, well, another sports interaction. I don't, you know, on this video, I don't promote gambling. In fact, I just, I just don't like all those ads for different gambling sites. I think, oh, it's like, down on the leaves to, you know, to win. <laughs> it's difficult to bet on them anymore. And yeah, I don't know how many people lose their shirts on betting, on betting on sports matches, but I don't plan to bet on them anytime soon. It's almost better to buy lottery tickets than to bet on sports matches because, well, it's hard to know how those matches are going to go. I mean, teams can look good on paper, but end up floundering big time when it comes to actually playing games. You remember, you know, during the current NFL season, the Buffalo Bills were predicted to at least get to the Super Bowl. They didn't. <laughs> so, there you go. I don't. I am always wary of predicting that. Oh, this team's going to get to the Cup final. Only one team's going to do it. I like to choose teams, candidates. You know, a, a list of candidates that I see as, you know, potential candidates to, to at least. Uh, see conference final action. So, in the East, I see the Canes, Devils, and Rangers as strong candidates. I also see the Bruins and Lightning. So, there are five teams I pick that I see are strong candidates to see conference final action. The Caps and Pens are kind of weaker candidates. Barely in as it is. I mean, the, the Caps are four points back of the Rangers for a top three Metro Division spot. But each of the Rangers, you know, but the Rangers, the Devils, and Canes are, you know, each at least 10 points ahead of the Caps. And the Rangers have played 50 games, so the Caps have played 53, so they could be heading down. Particularly because the Pens have played just 49 games with the Caps 53. Leafs have played 52. So yes, so I see in terms of potential Cup finalists from the Eastern Conference, I see as the strongest candidates in no particular order of strength, the Canes, Devils and Rangers from the Metro Division, and the Bruins and Lightning from the, from the Atlantic. So what about the Western Conference? I'd say that from the Central, I'd say the Stars and Jets are strong candidates. Um, from the Pacific, um, I'd say the Kraken. Uh, Kraken squad that's gone a consistently good run uh, is a strong candidate from the Pacific. And uh, I'd say also you know, probably the Kraken and Oilers to see Stanley Cup action. I mean, so Stars, Jets, Kraken and Oilers from the West. We'll see what happens. Pacific is wide open. The Kings haven't done great in the last 10, having earned 11 points. The Golden Knights have not been so golden during their last 10 games having earned only six points over the last ten. So... So that's pretty bad. So just to recap, on this Tuesday Eastern time, there will only be one game that features a Canadian NHL team in action, and that is an Oilers away game against the Wings at Little Caesars Arena. If you know Little Caesars, uh, American Pizza Company... I don't know how many Little, little Caesars locations there are in Canada, but I haven't tried it yet. Boston Pizza, I haven't tried, haven't tried that too much either in recent years. Yeah, I also like Eastside Mario's, you know, like nice food and all that, but the nearest one to where I live, as far as I know, is just too, and it was quite far for me, and probably too far for me to even order, so... 
despite all the ads we go manja manja but now there i'm gonna go see how the rest of my tuesday evening goes on that note i'm gonna say before i go that that year round i am a fan of the leafs and in the postseason cheer for as many non-habs canadian teams as possible I say so because as much as I respect the Habs uh, 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 cup winning record after 1967 in particular, I feel it's time for a non-Habs Canadian team to win a cup for the first time since the Oilers did so in 1990. Will that happen? We shall see. Because among Canadian teams, the Leafs are at this point a near lock to see playoff action in April. But with a reputation of having repeatedly lost playoff series and no playoff series wins since 2004, I don't give Leafs much of a hope of of seeing playoff action much beyond early May, depending on exact, the exact dates of the conference quarterfinals. In the Eastern Conference, the Sens are six points out of a playoff spot, but who knows what's going to happen? going to be very difficult stretch you know the Stens don't play very many games and even though they have games in hand on a lot of teams that are ahead of them and behind them who knows I mean the Wings are just one point behind and may very well knock the Sens down to no higher than seventh the Habs at over a dozen points back of the nearest available playoff spot Probably ain't going to see playoff action until next season at the earliest. In the Western Conference, the Jets are you know, in a top three divisional spot. You know, they are you know, eight points ahead of the Avs for in, in within the Central. The Orleans and Flames are in, are in wild card spots, but the others potentially getting to overtake the Golden Knights for third in the Pacific due to having more regulation wins. That's even if the Oilers end up winning that game in overtime or a shootout instead of regulation. Because the Oilers already have 26 regulation wins. The Knights, the Golden Knights, have 21. The Calgary Flames kind of you know, on the bubble. Who knows what's going to happen to them? I mean, two points, maybe two points behind the Oilers, but with having played one more game, and he goes. And we have the Canucks way back. Over a dozen points behind the Flames for a wild card spot. For a second wild card spot. It's pretty much anyone's guess at this point how many Canadian teams are going to do it. So I do predict that the Leafs and at least one of the Jets and Oilers will see playoff action. The issue is if the Jets continue to struggle. Whether the Oilers have a better chance of seeing playoff action than the Jets do. If only one of those Western teams ends up if ends up uh, seeing playoff action in April. On the other hand, it's uh, it's you know, this week though things are slowly ramping up. But again, So what I thought I would do is let's see what the you know, Winnipeg Jets are. Let's go kind of see the NHL Jets. Before I go, what I would do is so we go to the Jets and yeah, the Jets aren't in action again until wow, the Jets will have been off for almost two weeks. By the time they host the Blackhawks at Canada Life Center, formerly known as M Bell MPS Place. So I do follow all Canadian teams year round, but during the preseason and regular season, cheer for the Leafs, but no other Canadian team. So if another Canadian team plays and and the game does not involve the Leafs then I will almost always be a neutral observer. Even if it's a Canadian-American team matchup, of course I would follow the Canadian team to figure out 
what happened to it. I'd like to do the Canucks. And uh, one of my favorite uh, hockey YouTubers is Canuck Clay. Uh, real name is Clay Imu. And I was you know, busy with the uh, church and all. You know, cat and was, uh, you know, with church and you know, some late nights as well. Live streaming, it's not easy. I know it's not easy. I'd probably be dead tired too. You know, I, you know, I watch a lot of those live streams. Oh, I have to get anyone to call me there. So, on that note, I'm going to say good evening and go Leafs go. And if you like this video, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, I welcome it. Indeed, if you do subscribe, you'll get more time the notification of when videos that I produce go out. And I do try to produce, put up videos at least every other week. I'm not sure when the next one is going to be. But again, what the Leafs need to do is they need to fight in those games. But they don't have a lot of physicality. It's a question of what Dubas is going to do. And now, I'm going to say good evening and go Leafs go.